Hello everyone and welcome back finally to Wildemith. Looks like we got some uh, jank and a missing neck on two of uh, my legacy heroes here. But we are finally here today. This is being recorded on Monday, the day of the new campaign release, though I am not entirely sure when this video will be released. Maybe Thursday, because that's the only day of the week that I can think of where there isn't a video. There's a Goblins of Eldestone on Tuesday. I don't know. Maybe I'll release it early just because it's the new campaign. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But we have a new story. The uh, Luna and the Moth. An old book and a young argument led two siblings into the wilderness. And amid the bones of a mythic civilization, they'll embark on a moonstruck journey through tragedy and time, encountering a mysterious Westrill in the woods and bearing witness to the rise of a luminous queen. A five-chapter campaign with Thrixel as the main threat. And boy, do we enjoy the Thrixel! I did hear that they've nerfed the Drathrix, the big dragon Thrixel, though, so fingers crossed that that helps! Uh, this is going to be... Yeah, you know, we'll keep on... We'll keep it everything here. I like all of this. And we should get a prompt for four heroes. Yes, here we go. So, um... So, as I said before, my first hero is for sure going to be... If I can find her, Baydelin Whisper. Baydelin. Baydelin. Where are you, Baydelin? It looks like I passed her. She is here somewhere. There you are. Baydelin Whisper. Our fabled adventurer. She gets all three of her abilities, which is Sentinel, Vigilance, and Repost. Just take her. And the second character, the Hunter, which I put up a video for you guys to choose on uh, by near unanimous vote. Uh, will be Linny Rattlebow. Now, the thing about Linny, as well as Baydelin, is that they both have made a pact with Lord Evergreen, the giant forest spirit. So, the ca whatever the case of this particular story, uh, Linny and Baydelin have met up as followers of Lord Evergreen, and they have decided to work together to save these two siblings, or whatever it is. And let's, uh, let's quickly choose her abilities, because she can't take all of them. I like the idea of countering uh, ranged attacks, uh, though she doesn't have a, her bow. Hmm. Uh, okay, we'll give, we'll give her, I think she has a crossbow, right? Gear. Uh, okay, yeah, she does have a crossbow, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, maybe, uh, Fox Flight and Archery. Let's go with that. There we go. Uh, we do have two Future Mystics. Uh, older sibling and younger sibling, Shayla and Nola. Let's hit the randomize buttons on these two a little bit. Oh, okay. Hey, you know what? That works! They're both redheads. That's fine. Alright, I don't know anything about them. Uh... You know what, let's quickly go over uh, these characters. So, Baydelin, uh, we first met her in the Lover's Quarrel. I've done a couple of campaigns with her since then. You guys up until I haven't seen them. Baydelin was found as an infant, squalling in a basket in the River Shallows. The geezers who found her raised her as their own. She stood her ground to an outlaw once, to watch the woman's gang murder those who stood around her. She was let live, bidden to remember the p price of heroism. Anyway, it was easy for her to find motivation. A coin, or a kiss, or a steady source of both. She ended up losing her right foot and her right hand. Uh, she got uh, possessed by a spirit, which is supposedly still waiting. Uh, she met someone who had lost their only child and accepted them as a parent. She met her own father, but uh, decided she didn't want anything to do with him. She lived a long time underneath a spell of a curse, but was able to dispel it with an assistance. Um, 
she was been blessed due to her pact with Lord Evergreen. She was blessed with the voice of the land's forests. Vidalin's speech is enhancing, enhancingly songful, resonant, and reminding those who hear it of fresh pine, deep roots, and a pleasant wind. And when her teacher disappeared in the grasp of weird monsters from beyond dream or story, she knew she had to do whatever she could to do, well, whatever she could. And... Now, Linny Rattlebow. Much was made in Windy Hero of Linny's potential. Whenever she looked in the mirror, she could only shrug and laugh. An odd spell spur turned her odor to acid in the nostrils of all but the man she'd marry. Nothing pleased her like the stupefying draught and a slacking night with a stranger. She lived her pro promise of those things. Uh, hang on. Ah, they're both flirts. Neat. Um, Linny was enamored with a man she met in a tavern. She followed him without question and wound up would have been sold to slavers if not for her companion. She ended up with a peg leg after losing a foot. Uh, blessed with the voice of Lance Forest, her Lord Evergreen encounter again. She journeyed deep into the depths of her own body to fight her metaphorical inner demons. At some point, she looked upon another great forest spirit and uh, gained this vine aspect, the leaf mark. There we go. And n none of these campaigns... You have never met this woman before. She has never been in any uh, recorded campaign. Now... There we go, we got these two. Uh, I think this is the oldest sister. Janine grew up the elder of two daughters, born with worrying eyes that would see much to wince over in her lifetime. Her mother, Lena Elderider, was the windy Heather pr printer, a small, songful, and patient woman who never married. She died suddenly of autumn fever when Janine was 17, leaving her alone to care her for her 14-year-old sister. She sank into her own darkness for a while but was pulled out by the necessity of her of the, her work, keeping her mother's trade alive and keeping the girl from making any permanent mistakes. Janin filled the quiet with words of poets, hoping wisdom might blow through the cracked window and heal their hearts. She would remain a wounded, defensive spirit for the sum of her life, treating each coming year with apprehension and guided by simple dream. Preserve all you love for as long as you can. Literally loyal and dreamer, 21. Uh, so hang on, it's 17 and 14, so 14, 15, 16, 17, that's 4 years, 18, 19, 20, 21, that's also 4 years, so yeah, the ages match up. As a younger of the two daughters, Yvette lived her lucky childhood only looking upward. Despite this, she was naturally a little shy, genuinely unsure, and would often opt for a placid company of books over other kids. This made her a target for bullies at school. She was 14 when her mother died of autumn fever, casting her as her older sister's charge. Janine's burden. Even at 14, she felt her own weight. It was all like the beginning of a traffic novel, Yvette decided, and she started treating reality like the brave and heart-wrenching stories she loved. She sang the bird to the birds, quested the near hills for strawberries, and formed awkward, earnest relationships with her peers. These all flared and turned to smoke in a season. She was able to bury her sadness, though it did little to al alleviate her sister's worry. Privately, she would forever keep track of parallel existence. Parallel lives for herself and for Janin and Mom. Lives without the bite of illness, worry, or regret. From her firmest, happiest memories, that alternate path could go anywhere. And she could be anyone. Flirt, loyal, and wanderlust. Okay. Um... Arvet and Janin, though, I don't, those are kind of difficult to pronounce, and I do like to try and use custom names when possible, so. so yeah, these are going to be our characters for now, and, uh, yeah, we've gone ten minutes without any actual action, so let's, let's, uh, dive in. Oh boy. Memories and dreams, those lightless gleams that our eyes seek unfinding. They take us from tables and summon us home, warmly felt and ever fading. A prodigal child of Kraustel returns a grown woman. She comes with a tune in her breath, recalling the face of a girl she used to know, the afternoon fades.
Looks the same, definitely smells the same. Wonder if Jow Rear's still a screw up. I suppose the young ones are women and men. Medellin has no plan to stay. Squatch. She seeks a certain book from the famed Crow Still Library. One she's found before and never long forgets. None of these Helm Rhine books are, uh, very romantic, are they? I want more books like Tree by the Lake and... Or... Irvin and Jamie are sisters. What's that one you've got? Both possessed of Mystic's Gift. Hmm? This is... Actually, I don't honestly know. Neither of them know it yet. Is it racy? Drawings of nightmare beings haunt every page. Jamie and Irvin flip through it. Writings Corian. What's it called? Um, Dread Compendium. That sounds bad. Should I put it back? Never saw a reason to learn Cor Corian, but now I feel like someone who can't swim spotted the golden land across the river. I can figure out most of it, with time. Well, at least I don't have to search, they found it for me. Noticing the newcomer, Jamie snaps the cover closed. Fadel and Whisper? Is that Jamie Elderider? Have I been gone that long? Folks used to call you Cricket. They did! Feels like an eternity ago. Well, listen, I... Oh, did you ever meet my little sister? I'm Irvin Elderider. I do remember her, and... I need that, sorry. Need what? Swoop. Badellin takes the book from Jamie's weak hands. And walks out. Typical brute. Ick. Bit of feelings. Must have a reason. A little worried what it might be. Natural understanding. Star chosen hearts know each other when they collide. Flicker of longing hearts have risen. Baydellin's a little rude. I think we're gonna go for the bitter feelings here. Skipping any further reunions, Baydellin leaves Kraustel in the hour she's returned. You know how a dog's fascinated with whatever you swipe from it? I have to know now. What it, what it was. You coming? Grandma here is a little weird. It took me like three times to get read that, and even then I think it's wrong. Really? Why? Young, you're warned that anyone might be anyone, someday, that all you bring and all you chase will choose your mapless way. The sun's already low when they embark. Follow Bay Dellen. Okay. So, go in here. The sister's elder, Barry. Barry? Elder Rider. The sister's elder rider. Two redheads off to follow, find their destiny. Let's go! These stories are drafted in trails. Know where that line's from? Barely, wasn't it? Uh, Barley, wasn't it? That storyteller mom loved? Yeah, Riven Barley. It's from Wandervane. These stories were drafted in trails, scribbled onto landforms in a letting of dust print. Of dust print, crushed clover, and a blood I left on briars. Each moth blotted figure traced in Moon's hand. What does that mean? These stories of mine are transcribed moonlight, but they won't were invented by my feet. I think Barley must have been terribly lonely, don't you? Taking such a wild journey alone? Ah -ha. The first evening comes. Distant hills grow long, bluish beards. You forgot how it feels sometimes under the stars. How far behind would you guess we are? Probably close. How much faster could someone conceivably go? Someone with a peg leg, even. I wonder. Baydellin, she was a teenager when she left me. Uh, Baydellin, she was a teenager when she left me? Maybe 13. How old were you? No idea. Let's see, uh, 13, 12, 11, 10. She would have been 9, I think. And then, so now... What's brought her back? They eventually, la eventually lie down to sleep. But sleep's elusive on the naked ground. 
The dew chills their skinny limbs. They stare at the dawn. My neck feels roped to my shoulder. Maybe as our muscles warm up. The going only gets steeper. And further from anywhere they've been. That bringadish buffalo! <gasps> that rusty lump! It doesn't take long for Bedellin to realize she's being followed. She drives a harder pace. But the sisters Elder Rider prove, prove persistent. Spirited in their pursuit, if not particularly wise. The eighth day draws gray. They enter the ruins at noon. Stone walls, flailed at by wind and years, stand stubborn where they were founded. One of the last unburied skeletons of old Cryer. Kyor. This, this is Eldstone. Has to be. I might be wanting to come here, back before. We hiked a long way. A crypt of dreams waits beyond the hills, coffins full of wishes. I doubt we're catching Baydelin at this point, right? Should we think of heading home? See those metal points on the highest pillars? I read that those were were for trapping lightning. Chiron sorcerers, they'd harness it somehow. Think we'll get a storm? Hey, Irvin? As a kid, you always played played that you were Chiron Knight, slaying ancient ancient beasts, rescuing princes. You read a lot of Chiron stuff. You remember that? Yeah, I was obsessed. So, know the significance of this place? What even was it? A temple? Uh, well, Eldstone was a whole settlement, they think. You know how you hear about the old, the castles, knights, lords, and all? A lot of that's Kyor, I guess. Beyond the traditional stuff. What I remember, I mean what I read, and I did read everything I could find, they were people, like us, but they knew secrets that have long since been lost. Hey, they got shadow and star themes. The Chirons. Kyroian life remains in most ways a mystery. They built grand halls, keeps, wrote epics, charted stars, made things, beautiful things. Many of their stories survive and get put in our language, but a lot of the original meanings are lost. Story, song, and dream, they celebrated these things, but feared... they feared... How do I explain it? It's like they believed deeply in the power of imagining. They're poems that skirt the outline of some dreadful... Some dreadful idea. A threat? I don't know, but it's assumed they made an awful enemy. And now we have ruins. Destiny seems to doom the ones who reach highest, but then... Everything ends. Everyone's doom is the same. Eh, real upbeat there. Mom said we supposedly have Kyrie have a Kyoran bloodline. Pretty sure she was just stroking my imagi imagination, but... The air splits shrilly open. Squee! From clattering piles, a creature skitters that's unlike anything they've seen. Twin faces leer, the future forks down two horrible throats. Um... Startled. Irvin bends for a fallen branch. Jamie takes out a soup spoon. Reacting, Irvin draws her a trusty spoon. Jamie grabs an old hard bro. So just depending which one is uh, which. I can't remember which one's the old one and which one's the young one. I'm just going to choose option number one. Hopefully, I'll figure it out as I go along. In that moment, the dormant power in their blood awakens. Convenient. Alright, I have probably cut out every single camp, every single fight since here, because we are well beyond the 30 minute mark here. Uh, we are fighting a lot of these things, the two-headed guys. Uh, Jamie is a naturalist, Irvin is a humanist, they're like, you know, helping each other do that thing, they keep, uh, they're like opposite, equal and opposites and all that good stuff. Uh, downside is that... Yeah, turns out, if you so much as get slightly wounded, uh, like you lose a single leg, then it's game over. So, 
We are having trouble here. I'm trying to pull Baydel in closer so that she can help us better. These two girls keep dying. I don't know why, but they keep dying, and it's slightly frustrating. Thankfully, we at least got two of them dead. Okay, we might have all four of them dead. That's good. So maybe Baydelin can actually get to them sooner here. Oh, or not. Okay, that... Hey, counterattack! Excellent! So yeah, uh, thrusts keep just popping out of the woodwork here, and it is quite frustrating. Particularly with all these dang things everywhere! Uh... Is this a tree or... No, this is a stump. Splinter last year. Uh... You know what? We'll go for it. This is probably... This is the first time we've had a single round without... Without one of the two girls getting hurt, so you know what, we'll, we'll try. We're gonna try. That's just what we're gonna do. I will interfuse with these rocks. And then use a bone lance. There we go. And we're just gonna hide behind Baydelin, because Baydelin actually knows what she's doing. Unlike these two, who have no idea what they're doing. And yeah, okay, yeah, you, you two just stay there. Um... Yeah, you don't know pull that here. And then Bedellin hit it. Thank you, Bedellin. There is still more to come. We just have to wait for it. In the meantime, we're throwing rocks and vines around like it's nobody's business. Hopefully, these guys come closer to Bedellin. They seem to be avoiding Bedellin. That's fine. Uh, Jamie, vine. Can you uh, do a vine wrench? No, you cannot vine wrench. Wild Grasp. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, hang on. Okay, so we're gonna put Baydelin right here. Yeah, that should cover them. Uh, we'll move you to here. And then you're gonna do a Wild Grasp. And he dodged. That's quite bad, actually. Quite very bad. Um, hmm. Okay, well... I'm going to trust that Baydelin can handle the uh, Enhanced Thrust, and we're going to throw a rock at this guy again. And hopefully everything goes fine this time, because it hasn't gone fine in the past like three times. Four times, even. I'm pretty sure it's been four times. Okay, Bell Baydelin's pretty hurt. Jamie got hit. Twice. Okay, just hit it. Just hit it. For the love of gods, hit it. Uh, vine wrench. Throw it over here. Okay, there we go. Finally, we, this is four, four times. Four times I've had to do this. Maybe, this might be fifth. I don't know. Whatever. We're done. It's done. Thank God. <laughs> ah. And we got a smoke slicer. A great sword. Uh, a well made great sword. You know what, Jamie? No. I don't know. Uh, yeah, take it. Take the sword. Have a sword. Uh, plus 07 bonus damage. Okay, you know what? We're giving that to you. The final shriek shakes columns. It bounces along causeways as a rattling leg shatters, shudders still. Yuck, its belly's bubbling. Wait, and it, wait, and it is bubbling. But hold on, what just happened to us? Are we okay? Is my mind broken, or did we just... Did you know the Thrixel were here? No. I can see you're going to ask what the Thrixel is. Here. Sadly, this book will help you more than me. You basically forced us to follow you. Can't you just stop and expl- Shh. The softest song trickles their ears. A hum so gentle, it sounds like a windy lie. Like bows glowing, groaning in the breeze. Like gaps in the walls breathing in a gust. Nail Shin, are you out there? Baydelin's shout is wa warped by sudden sweet smelling fog. The fog floats from everywhere, turns archways into ogres, rubble into roaming ooze. Master Shin, please! Master Shin, I'm here! Who are you shouting for? And what, I mean, is. And what they are, are they doing, Irvin wonders? Walking? Are they searching? What are they... what are they searching for? Master Shin! 
What are they searching for? Through the stones and fog and trees. What are they doing? What are they... and... <sighs> Ooh, eyes everywhere! <laughs> huh? I'm walking in the forest. Hmm? Yeah. What? Tree trunks gather around them like gawkers. Sunbeams stroke their faces. I'm not moving until someone says what that was. We were... I don't know. Somehow they... Who's they? Thrixel. There must have been more of them. Okay, and when you say that word... Thriskel? My body hurts. Thrixel! The Thrixel! There... Remember that book? This book? Yes, the important thing is, they're capable of... How do I say it? Capable of captivating the mind, grounding three birds with a glamour, sending them stumbling far to die. The rakish stranger pauses to be seen. How long has he been standing there? He offers some kind of perfunctory salute. Yes, little nest-thrown dears. You might have been food for the wolves and weasels, but a man happened by who bore a gift for magic. A glyphic smile. And an enduring fondness for birds. Hmm, creepy. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know how long this video is going to be, because I had to do that fight like four or five times. So, before we move any further, I'm going to have to say thank you ever so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you liked it. Don't if you didn't. We will figure out what this thing is and what he's talking about, about birds. And I will see you next time. Farewell. Creatures lurking suffer worse than mange. No one knows what winter yet will bring. Something in the woods is fair.